Hi, good day to you. Welcome to the first chemistry video on this channel. Without further ado, let's get started. In chemistry or even physics, we will be studying substances that happen in the three states. In the three states, the particles, how they interact with each other, how they move, it's pretty much covered in lower secondary. Some students have even been exposed to these in upper primary, but I'll just briefly go through them in solid state. The particles are closely packed and in orderly manner, orderly rows held together by strong attractive forces and they have only enough energy to vibrate at their fixed positions so they cannot move freely. As such, it has a fixed shape and because of this fixed shape, they cannot be expanded or compressed so their shape remains the same. As for liquids, the particles are still close, but they are not arranged in orderly manner. They can still roll around each other. They have enough, they have strong forces of attraction, but weaker than that in the solid. Therefore, they are not held in fixed position. They can move around freely through the liquid. That's why it does not have a fixed shape. However, it has a fixed volume because the particles are still very close to each other. You cannot further compress it. Lastly, in gaseous state, particles are very, very far apart and they are moving at high speeds. There's a lot of kinetic energy and the forces of attraction between atoms or molecules are very weak. They travel about independently and move rapidly in any direction. Therefore, it has no fixed shape and it does not have a fixed volume as well because it can be further stretched and compressed. If you put air in a plunger, you can stretch it out a little bit and compress it a little bit based on the temperature and pressure that you are in at the current moment as gases are very sensitive to temperature and pressure. Okay, so here is a little table that shows the summary of the three states and their shape and volume. And so for changing for of states from one to another, will, the particles will undergo a certain series of events for that to happen. So for example, in melting, as temperature rises, heat energy, energy is absorbed by the particles. The particles move faster. Once they receive sufficient energy, the vibrations are able to overcome the forces of attraction between them. Particles begin to break away from their fixed positions and therefore are no longer held in their original positions. They are now free to move about. So students are usually asked to be able to describe these process of events. So I usually tell my students to start off the question with as temperature rises, what happens next? And coupling this melting process, there's such thing called the temperature graph. And you may know that melting occurs at a fixed point called the melting point. Usually for water, it'll be at zero. And at this point, there will be a mixture of solid and liquid particles because all the energy that is being supplied is currently being uptaken by the particles to break away from each other. They are intermolecular forces of attraction. This portion contains only solid, this portion contains only liquid. And conversely, for freezing, as temperature drops, energy is being given out by the particles, they lose energy, they vibrate slow enough till they settle down in fixed position and the intermolecular forces of attraction are formed and therefore they are held in fixed position, finally forming a solid. So this is the kind of vocabulary and language that you need to be able to produce. Same for melting curve, there's such thing as a cooling curve and the cooling curve has such thing called the freezing point. Also similarly for boiling, as temperature rises, the particles gain the energy and vibrate faster. The particles in the liquid gain enough energy to break away from their intermolecular forces of attraction and escape as a gas particle. Same, there is such thing as a boiling curve, boiling point. Okay, the difference of evaporation and boiling will be as such. Boiling occurs only at one point and it occurs throughout the liquid and rapidly because all the particles in the liquid are absorbing the energy to break away from their intermolecular forces of attraction to be released as a gas. However, for evaporation, it can occur in a wide variety of temperatures. It only occurs at the surface and it occurs slowly. At any one point in time for evaporation, some particles will just have enough energy to escape as a gas to break away from the forces of attraction that's holding them down into the liquid. That's how it happens. For condensation, as particles, usually water, when it comes into close contact with a cold surface, heat 
energy is given out by the gaseous water particles known as water vapor and as the temperature drops the particles lose energy and move slowly therefore they are able to come together and form intermolecular forces of attraction forming liquid that attaches onto a surface that's called condensation okay quick run for the three states and that is all for today hope you enjoyed this video give it a like and subscribe share it with somebody that needs to see this and i will see you in the next video bye